What is going on, everybody? I hope you're doing incredibly well. Today, we're going to be breaking down two trades that I took, one that I took uh, towards the end of last week. Uh, I think it was actually the, I think it was Friday last week, and one that I took much earlier this morning. It's um, almost midnight now. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just going to explain my process. Hopefully, this is going to help you a whole lot. I'm going to keep this short, sweet, to the point, and explain everything that you're seeing on this screen right now. So I hope that you enjoy. So first things first, I was on the weekly, and I pl plotted on my weekly significance. This is something I've spoken about in a lot of videos, and I've spoken about it in a hell of a lot of depth in the Psych Effects Academy. But basically, it just works off major points on the weekly. Um, and in this case, it was this level right here. I'm specifically monitoring the candle closes and how the candles are behaving. And then I'll go down to the daily, uh, for example. Um, and right here, we can see a very clear, come. we come back up, we test it here. And then last week, we had a very nicely bearish week, closing, breaking structure. We had this daily retest level here. And uh, yeah, and so what I was doing then is I was on the one hour and I was monitoring areas of liquidity, I was monitoring imbalances, and I was monitoring previous touches within the range. So what do all of these things mean? Well, imbalances right here would be the first, um, this is where the imbalance starts, this is where it ends, so during this gap, and then right above here, we've got an aggressive supply zone. This is something I've spoken about in the Psych Effects Academy a lot, um, but this is a aggressive supply zone that's just above the uh, imbalance. Okay, nice and simple. This longer line here is that daily. In fact, let me just label this here so that's easy for you to see. This is just a standard daily retest type level. Um, and then from then on, so last week, I saw price coming into this level. I saw it fill in this imbalance up here. Now, at this point in time, I went down to, I think it was the five minute actually, believe yeah yeah it was okay so went into the five minute i saw that we took up we went above the daily retest level we came in here we had two decent wick rejections and a bearish candle printed now this is a classic example um of me not being perfect by any stretch of the um imagination because on my plan it says that i should mark out my entry time frame the at least apply my plan for this specific type of setup um that i should take partials at the major um, structural lows or highs on my entry time frame. Now, the first one of those for me should have been right here, but I held it um, and I thought I was so confident it was going to come down here, but it didn't. And this is a classic example, like I said, of me not being perfect. It just goes to show that you don't need to be perfect. The goal isn't to be perfect. I'm judging my performance based on larger volumes of trades, meaning I'm not judging them based on, oh, what, how am I performing over the next one or two? I'm looking at 20, 30, 40 trades. And if this problem continued to persist uh, uh, to a significant amount over a larger amount of trades like that, at that point, I would go in and I'd be like, okay, cool. I need to go and fix this problem. And that has taken me a long time to get to that point because it's harder to do. It's much, much harder to do um, to, you know, actually sit there and be patient and wait for enough data to confirm what you think. Because often when we have an idea, we're like, oh my God, I need to go and check this out. And, you know, whether it's in the form of trying a new strategy or adding this new thing to your plan or changing something about your process, um, and instead, just being patient and waiting to have that confirmation that your thoughts are right, because often our thoughts will deceive us and are based in, in no logic, uh, clear logic whatsoever, at least not in any real fact. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so that was that. Luckily, I was at break even as soon as it went to this point anyway, so I didn't really lose anything. Um, it's just me being uh, maybe slightly overly critical of myself. OK, now moving into this week. Uh, coming into this morning, so if we just plop on these sessions, so this was right slap bang at the middle of, um, not the middle, at the beginning of, of London. Now, the two areas that I want to draw your attention to are this first thing right here, this first line where I put liquidity sweeps and the Asia liquidity sweeps. Now, at this point in time, the imbalance, this is a one hour imbalance, was already filled. Um, we can see was this filled on the five minute? I'm not looking at imbalances on the five minute, but it's just something to uh, to be aware of. It's just a nice little confluence um, that I'm really enjoying at the moment, at least. Um, and um, and yeah, so right here we've got the previous touch retrace. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me just get rid of the sessions quickly. If we have got structure going down, and let's say we have one retrace, and it looks like it's going down, so this would have been the point from last week. If price does come back up and it's still predisposed to go down, meaning our directional tools haven't changed, then it needs to take out the high 
or most of the time it should take out the high of that previous touch, even if it's just like a tiny little wick and then it should go back down. Because if you just wanna think about it like this, the amount of orders that were here was strong enough to push price here. It needed to come higher to grab more orders, more liquidity in order to get past this point and continue going lower, whether it went to just a level here or it goes down to the low or beyond, okay? And so what we're seeing right here with this first top line is exactly that, okay? This, in this whole daily bearish range, we continue going up. At this point in time, this was the highest point right here. In fact, let me just mark them on. So at this point in time, this was the highest point of the retrace. We then take that out right here. And then this is the highest, which we then take out right here, which then makes this the highest. And then we just take it out right here. Okay, only just. And so today I saw very early into the session that we were taking it out and then we formed a bearish candle immediately after. We're still within that aggressive supply zone. And also we had taken out the Asian range liquidity on the upside. Okay, now these were confluences to the overall trajectory of the plan, but it relied heavily on my good placement of the uh, level of weekly significance. This is just a way of saying a weekly key area for me and one that I'm monitoring uh, the weekly candles around. Um, and so once I had that, that gave me a very strong indication of my direction that was confirmed on the daily with the break of structure. And then as I was monitoring the one hour for the high quality zones and those sweeps of liquidity, it allowed me to get a very, very nice um, entry. I believe this, but judging by where I've entered here, I think this is on the 15 minute, just because I would always enter on the candle close for um, something like this based on how much time I had this morning. Um, so yeah, so nothing too special with the risk reward, nothing crazy. Why was I targeting right down here? Why wasn't I targeting the lows? Well, initially I was going to target these lows down here and there's nothing wrong if I had done that. It does technically fit my rules. However, for me, I was just looking to get in and out as I was busy. I didn't want to be looking and managing my trade throughout the day. So, uh, so I literally just uh, cashed out um, after we targeted this second um, liquidity pool right here. We've got liquidity pool one, liquidity pool two that formed here in the form of equal lows and stuff like that. And you can see my target is just a couple of pips um, below or maybe half a pip below this second one right here. You can see it came down here. Um, is it a coincidence that it came down here and then immediately went back up? Uh, not really because it's grabbing liquidity right here. It then came back up here. This was actually a really nice opportunity for the second entry as right here it would have arguably been a, another break of structure that would have been an extra confirmation to go in right here and then potentially take this down to this level down here. A lot of the people in the community um, in Psych Effects Academy have been posting the setup. Loads of us took this um, without even communicating with each other, although some of us were. Um, and uh, yeah, and it just goes to show that, uh, you know, when you read uh, the charts consistently and systematically, these patterns, these setups will continue to occur. And it just requires you to add a bit of a narrative to what's going on, but not one that you pick in the moment, one that is pre-decided, pre-tested, and you can literally just go to the charts and be like, right, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, to a set of pre uh, determined rules. Okay, so guys, I really, really hope that, that has helped you. Um, if it has, I'd appreciate it if you left a like. And if you want to learn more about these concepts in a lot more detail and exactly how to craft direction, all the kind of little microcosms that go into it, then highly recommend checking out the Psych Effects Academy in the description box below. But guys, take care. I love you all, and I will see you very, very soon.